If there's one thing most of us can be certain of, it's this, that our observed physical reality actually exists. Although there are always some philosophical assumptions behind this conclusion, it's an assumption that isn't contradicted by anything we've ever measured under any conditions. Not with human senses, not with laboratory equipment, not with telescopes or observatories, not under the influence of nature alone, nor with specific human intervention. But let's take a step further. What if our very act of observing is shaping this reality? This brings us to a fascinating concept known as the observer effect. Essentially, the act of measurement can influence the system being observed. In quantum mechanics, this is most famously illustrated by the double slit experiment. Picture this. Electrons are fired at a barrier with two slits. When not observed, they create an interference pattern on a screen behind, behaving like waves. But when we place a detector to observe which slit they pass through, they suddenly behave like particles and the interference pattern disappears. It's as if the electrons know they're being watched and change their behavior accordingly. This phenomenon isn't just confined to the quantum world. In psychology, the Hawthorne effect suggests that people alter their behavior when they know they're being observed. Could it be that our reality too is subtly shifting with our observations and measurements? Put simply, the big idea is that reality exists, and it exists in a fashion that's independent of anyone or anything that monitors or observes reality. Particles have masses, charges, and other intrinsic properties that don't change, regardless of who measures it, where they are, how fast they're moving, which property gets measured, or by what means the measurement is acquired. This is a big foundational idea of science, that something's realness is completely independent of whether or how it's being examined. But this idea is only an assumption. Sure, we can see that the laws of physics and the fundamental constants of nature don't appear to change over time or space. An atom of hydrogen here has the same set of emission and absorption lines as an atom of hydrogen, many billions of light years away, or many billions of years ago. A proton has the same rest mass in Antarctica as it does on the International Space Station as it does in a galaxy anywhere within the universe. As these examples show, we can only state that this assumption is good to the degree we're capable of putting it to experimental and observational tests. This was borne out extremely well by physics over most of its history, from Galileo to Newton to Faraday to Maxwell. The law of gravity appeared to be the same universal law everywhere we could see, from objects here on Earth to objects that orbited around the Earth to planets and moons and comets that orbited objects other than the Earth. The gravitational constant was truly a constant. The laws of motion appeared to be the same for everyone. And if two different people measured the position, motion, or acceleration of an object, as well as the duration it took to go between different points, they'd both get the same answer. This appeared, initially, to apply just as well to electromagnetism as it did to classical mechanics. The laws of electricity and magnetism were the same everywhere we looked and applied to charges at rest and in motion, at any speed, equally well. It didn't matter whether these were radioactive particles like alpha particles, helium nuclei, or beta particles, electrons, or whether these were enormous collections of charges like one might find on a charged up Van de Graaff generator. Charges might behave differently within conductors or insulators and the nature of those materials might affect how charges move within them, but the laws, constants, and who measured what would all be consistent regardless of the setup. But what if we told you there's more to the story? What if the very fabric of reality is even stranger than we ever imagined? Let's dive deeper into the concept of space-time. The warping of space-time means that the shortest path between two points isn't always a straight line. Sometimes, it's a curve. In extreme environments, like near a black hole, space-time can be stretched to its limits. But what about the quantum realm? At the smallest scales, space-time isn't smooth and continuous. It's a frothy, turbulent sea of fluctuations. This quantum foam suggests that space-time itself might be composed of discrete units, much like pixels on a screen. Could these quantum fluctuations be the building blocks of reality? And then there's the idea of parallel universes. Some theories propose that our universe is just one of many, each with its own version of space-time, 
In these alternate realities, the laws of physics might be different, creating entirely new possibilities for existence. In the quantum realm, things get even more counterintuitive. The outcome of an experiment or observation depends on your method of making that observation or measurement and on whether you make one at all. Consider, for example, the famed two-slit experiment. Imagine throwing a large number of small objects through a barrier with two slits carved into it. You'd expect to see those objects collect against the wall behind the barrier in two piles, one corresponding to the slit on the left and one to the slit on the right. This is precisely what happens in the macroscopic world, whether you use balls, pebbles, or living organisms. But if you use quantum particles, like electrons or photons, you don't get two piles. Instead, you get a wave-like interference pattern. Alternating locations, equidistantly spaced, where particles preferentially land and are forbidden from landing. The greatest peak of collected particles is at the midpoint between the two slits, with alternating peaks and troughs as you move away from that central peak. It might occur to you to send the particles through one at a time, instead of all at once. When you do that, the same results emerge. Macroscopic objects make two piles, but quantum particles only land in the peaks of an interference pattern. When enough particles are tallied, the full pattern emerges. Now, what if you try to measure which slit each particle goes through on its way to the back wall? Surprisingly, now both experiments, the macroscopic and quantum ones, lead to only two piles. The act of observing which slit did each particle go through destroys the quantum behavior. Somehow, making a measurement, which means inducing an energetic enough interaction between the quantum particle you're experimenting on with another quantum, alters the behavior of the quantum system. We see this phenomenon manifest in many different ways in quantum mechanics. Pass a spinning quantum particle through a vertically oriented magnet, and the particle will deflect either upwards or downwards, revealing its spin. Put another vertically oriented magnet further downstream, and the particles that deflected upwards will still deflect upwards, while the ones that deflected downwards will still deflect downwards. But what do you suppose will happen if you put a horizontally oriented magnet between the two vertical one? Where do we, as conscious beings, fit into this puzzling tapestry? The answer is twofold. The horizontal magnet splits the beam of particles in two, with one set of particles deflecting leftwards and the deflecting rightwards. But now, regardless of which sets of particles you choose to pass through the next vertical magnet, they once again split into upwards and downwards trajectories. In other words, making a horizontal measurement, or observation, destroys the vertical information about the spin orientation of these particles. Does this mean that there is no such thing as objective reality? Not necessarily. There could be an underlying reality that exists whether we measure it or not. And our measurements and observations are just a crude, insufficient way to reveal the full, true character of what our objective reality actually is. Many people believe that this will someday be shown to be the case. But so far, and this advance was just awarded 20s and 22s Nobel Prize in Physics, we can place very meaningful constraints on what just type of reality exists independent of our observations and measurements. To the best that we can tell, the real outcomes that arise in the universe cannot be divorced from who is measuring them and how. It isn't the job of science contrary to popular belief, to explain the universe that we inhabit. Instead, science's goal is to accurately describe the universe that we inhabit, and in that, it's been remarkably successful. But the questions that most of us get excited about asking, and we do it by default, without any prompting, often involve figuring out why certain phenomena happen. We love notions of cause and effect, that something occurs, and then later on, as a consequence of that first thing occurring, something else happens because of it. That's true in many instances, but the quantum universe can violate cause and effect as well in a variety of ways. One such question that we cannot answer is whether there is such a thing as an objective, observer-independent reality. Many of us assume that it does, and we build our interpretations of quantum physics in such ways that they admit an underlying, objective reality. Others don't make that assumption and build equally valid interpretations of quantum physics that don't necessarily have one. 
All we have to guide us, for better or for worse, is what we can observe and measure. We can physically describe that, successfully, either with or without an objective, observer-independent reality. At this moment in time, it's up to each of us to decide whether we'd rather add on the philosophically satisfying but physically extraneous notion that objective reality is meaningful.